Our gardens store hundreds of wild stories that we rarely discover. Great dramas about life and death. Stories about standing together or choosing to save oneself. About standing on your own feet. About mastering the impossible. Where mistakes can cost dearly and life can change in a second. But where the most incredible things can happen too. For a year, we have followed the course of life in gardens to get a closer look at the secrets of the garden. Gardens are an oasis for us humans and the animals. And especially here in the late spring, our lawns are a vigorous cornucopia of life. The grass shoots and turns into a savanna of wild animals. And in a corner of the garden, a drama is brewing between some rival mates. Down at the bottom of the grass floor, a small but older bank vole is guarding like a predator over its territory. Although he weighs less than 40 grams, he can take pride in being the head of a huge family with his very own harem. His kingdom consists of females that he must protect and mate with so he can make sure he brings the next generation into the world. Right now it's breeding season, and with so much to do, he's not always attentive to what's going on behind his back, and there's danger on the horizon. A younger male is lurking in the grass. He's waiting for the right time to make his move and take over the females those above and below the surface and to get rid of any of his rival's babies. A young bank vole has become a mother. Five little siblings have just entered the world. They each weigh as little as two grams, the same as a sugar cube. They are not yet fully developed the mother actually gives birth to them prematurely so she doesn't have to carry them around as they grow larger in size. The little siblings are vulnerable right now, but they feel safe with their mother who feeds them with her fatty milk. She is their guard against the threats from the outside world, for it is crucial to protect the next generation. And now the babies are in danger. In nature, nothing must be wasted, and this mother will go so far as to eat her own babies if she feels a threat from the outside. Otherwise, her enemies will, even if the enemy is another bank vole. So if the defenseless babies are to survive, they have to rely on their old father's abilities to keep the strong younger males away from the mouse hole. The animals in our gardens are good at keeping secrets. Although they live their entire lives right outside our door, and we are often unaware of their world, they are often shy and fearful of us. But in the quiet moments at the beginning and end of the day, we may be lucky to catch a glimpse of them in our gardens, as these are the moments they can move around undisturbed. This female deer is hungry and moving towards the garden to eat off the spring shoots and the green grass of the succulent lawn. Recently, 
she has been even more alert than usual. It is only a few weeks ago that she gave birth to a tiny fawn. In the beginning, the fawn is vulnerable to predators that will attack it if given the chance. The mother must eat a lot to produce enough milk, so she leaves the fawn for hours to seek food. The mother will only call to the fawn to join her when it is ready to learn about being a grown-up. The time has come. Now she calls. <coughs> She cuddles her little fawn to make the bond between them stronger. Right now, it is a loving moment between mother and child. It is hard to imagine that the mother deer actually is capable of licking the fawn to death right after the birth, all in an act of sheer love. Today, the mother takes the fawn into the garden for the first time to explore a whole new world. It's a bit reluctant to start with, but quickly becomes more bold. Like many baby animals, the fawn is playful and curious. But what looks playful is in fact an exercise in escaping and surviving. The grass in our spring lawns is tempting and nourishes many of the animals that live in the gardens. But the mother has picked up a deadly parasite in its search for food. A small, microscopic flatworm. It's not visible to the naked eye, but can do great harm to the animals. It can multiply in the liver and turn into thousands of other parasites, which can be fatal to their host. It spreads through the animal's stool and can then move on to the next animal that comes into contact with it. The Roman snail slides off at its own pace in the grass. It floats over everything it encounters on its way. And it doesn't pass up on a light meal, not even a parasite-infected deer stool. But it obviously doesn't know. A snail brain isn't the biggest, and a Roman snail is almost deaf and blind. It has four tentacles instead. On two of them, there is a tiny little eye that can only see light and shadow. It uses all its other senses for orientation. The soft, adjustable tentacles can help it feel its way towards the most important of targets, a potential date. One to rub houses with and to eventually mate with. And now there's a house in sight. What does it look for? The Roman snail has many opportunities to find a mate being both a male and a female. But finding the right fit is like winning the lottery. And timing seems to be the hardest part. Getting everything right so that mating is possible is like sorting out a complicated puzzle. And like everything else in the snail's life, it's a slow process. They start with foreplay, raise their front bodies and press the soles of their feet together. They can stand that way for hours. All the while, tasting, smelling, and getting ready. But it's not just eroticism. In this slimy affair, it is just as much about the battle between the sexes, with both of them fighting to be the male. It is harder to be the female, 
Sperm is easy to make, while eggs require far more energy and effort. The Roman snail's genitals consist of both a penis and a vagina in the same package. The sex organ pops out when it's ready, and it is now emerging on both of them. We are close now, and now the penis emerges, and it is ready to be inserted into the partner. But now things are going wrong. The other Roman snail is retracting, and it takes two to tango. In the wake of this disappointing ending, the Roman snail does not only leave a snail trail, but also a tiny, invisible parasite. Gardens are sanctuaries for both large and small animals, and the lawn its own universe with many different small plants and grasses. Here, life-giving flowers tower up and nourish a host of insects. And if you are lucky and linger for a while, little miracles unfold right in front of your eyes. is a micro world where all sorts can happen, even a commute to work. It's rush hour on the ant highway, and the black garden ants are zigzagging back and forth from the cracks in the garden tiles. They seem to be moving around without any sense of direction or purpose, but nothing is coincidental. Every day they follow the same route back and forth to work with the sole purpose of collecting food so that they can ensure the survival of the colony. The ant colony consists of an incredible organism of more than 1,000 individuals ruled by a queen. Together, they find strength in this colony. The individual ant is a servant to the entire community. This is a female ant. She's a working ant and is barren. Along with her siblings, she's in the process of moving a leaf that is blocking the entrance. She's strong and can lift her own weight several hundred times. This female ant is always up and running. There is no such thing as work-related stress. When the female ant goes to work, she follows the scent the other ants leave along the highway. The female ant has announced her arrival at work. Here on the stem, she and her siblings keep aphids like cattle. The aphid's urine is sweet and is called honeydew. It's a fantastic source of nutrition for the ants. First, the ants gently stroke the aphids to make them relieve honeydew, and then they vacuum it up with their mouths and store it securely in their abdomen. The ants work like this day in and day out, moving from plant to plant in search of the sweet and precious honeydew. This thistle is completely filled with aphids, and it's a wonderland for aphid lovers of all kinds. Also for the ladybird. 
It's hard to imagine that this sweet and adorable insect of the garden is a monster in disguise that doesn't settle for the sweet honeydew, but in a short time can devour this entire colony of aphids. The ladybird is a serious threat to both the aphids and the ant colony. But the ants and the aphids have a collaboration agreement where they benefit from each other. As payment for the precious honeydew, the ants protect the aphids against ferocious enemies like the ladybird. So now the female ant organizes her siblings so that they can together battle the ladybird. The ants try to overpower the ladybird. But it is difficult to get hold of because its shield is so smooth. The female ant has a good hold on the leg. And as a defense, the ladybird secretes a foul yellow fluid from its joints. But the ants also can retaliate with chemical weapons of their own. They excrete acid and aim for the ladybird's most vulnerable areas. And in the end, it gives up. The female ant and the ant colony have prevailed. But the danger is lurking everywhere in the tall grass. The Roman snail is not a direct threat. It's a vegetarian. But inside it, the parasite it picked up wants to get out again. It forces the snail to secrete mucus. And inside this mucus, the small flatworm hides. For the female ant, this tempting mucus is an extra bonus she can bring home to the colony. Having no clue about the parasite, the female ant consumes the nutritional mucus, and she doesn't know that the flatworm from the deer has now entered her body. High above the lawn formations of birds float around in the sky. The starling's arrival is a clear sign of spring. This flock has returned from northern France and the gardens are their summer destination. And our gardens are filled again with starling songs. This is a male starling. When the spring sun hits, his impressive plumage gleams. It looks like a shining pinstripe suit. The suit and his beautiful song has a sole purpose, to lure a lovely female starling onto the branch. It's mating season. But there are many to choose from, and finding the right one can be a complicated affair. Because a male starling must be chosen by a female starling. And she can be picky. She'll only have him if, one, that he has acquired real estate in advance, so that's the first thing he does. He takes a step towards the female starling. Two, he must defend his house against other envious males. Take that male neighbor, close to full house. Three, he must clean the nest thoroughly. It can be full of parasites, so he collects herbs, cowslips, and wormwood to disinfect it. He cleans every corner and works late into the evening before he's satisfied. Now the male starling is more than ready to have a go on the branch and he wishfully sings his song. It could happen 
any time now. While the starling whistles his last song, there's movement in the bushes. One of the largest animals in our gardens has emerged in the twilight. The fox has got used to us humans and has virtually no enemies. Our life in and around the garden is his pantry. For this male fox, it's more important than ever to find food. He's no longer by himself. There are several mouths to feed. Not far from there, someone is waiting for him. The male fox now has a family. The cubs are hungry, waiting for what their father can provide. The cubs are five to six weeks old, and this is the first time out of the cave, and the first time they feel the spring grass underneath their paws. They are carefree and playing, without ever having to worry about hunting. And they should enjoy it while they can. Soon adulthood will arrive and all the obligations that come with it. Others can't run as easily from their responsibilities. It's the big day. The nest is clean and decorated, ready to become a home for a family. The male starling is ready for his female. The same goes for the male starling next door. Whoops, his female starling has also woken up. Starlings are not faithful. Both females and males quickly find other partners. So when the male next door flies out, the male starling sees an opportunity for a little adventure. And it looks like they both are ready for a walk on the branch. They look at each other. A male can have up to three females at the same time. But female starlings are also promiscuous and are happy to take advantage of the situation if it arises. That wasn't so bad, because soon after, there are six fine small eggs in the nest. Now, 
it's all about lying down and staying focused. bottom of the grass is another frisky male and he's pretty busy trying to catch a female in his net. But for the male, a meeting with the perfect one can be the end of him. On his front side, the two dark brown sacs clearly indicate that he is a male. These are his mating organs. They are stuffed with semen and he is ready to expel it. The nursery web spider male has all his eight eyes stiffly aimed at a lovely sunbathing female. She looks peaceful, but she is both bigger and stronger than him, and she sees him as much as a meal as a potential date. If he isn't careful, he'll be eaten. But he knows what to do. He might be able to cure her moodiness if he gives her a present. The purpose of the gift is to show her that he is a good hunter. And at the same time, it's difficult to kill your partner when your mouth is full. He makes an effort to wrap the gift neatly in a fine silk web. The better it's wrapped, the greater the chance of survival. Because it's while she's unpacking, he can sneak up on her to mate. That's the way to do it. The male is ready. But it turns out his efforts are in vain. For another male is now approaching with a large and beautifully wrapped grasshopper gift. For the female spider, it all depends on the size of the gift. The male spider approaches the attractive female spider. Carefully, he presents the gift to her. If she rejects his gift, she may end up eating him instead. She decides whether they are going to mate. She accepts the gift, but quickly tries to escape without giving anything in return. He stubbornly persists and plays dead. It's now or never. It's working. She begins to unpack the gift. He starts to stimulate her genitalia so she's ready to receive the sperm. And after a little rough and tumble, it succeeds. He has handed his contribution to the next generation of nursery web spiders. And the male survived. Now, she wants peace and quiet to enjoy her gift. Soon, she will be ready to send hundreds of spider babies out into the world if she can withstand the other dangers of the lawn. As the summer approaches, the grass on the lawn grows. It bothers our gaze and conflicts with our need for tidiness. And the machines come out. As we start fixing this, the lawn suddenly becomes a man-made natural disaster for animals and plants. The grass is under attack when we mow it, and it behaves that way. For what it is to us a lovely scent of freshly mowed lawn is in fact the grass's way of crying for help and warning other grasses 
that there is a lawnmower on the way. They start their chemical defence. But the lawnmower is completely unaffected. And when we make the final touch on our work, the world of the garden views this as a completely uncontrollable fire. The flames consume everything in its path. This can be deadly if you are only three millimetres long. Now the wounded ant has called for help. But an injured ant can pose a threat to the ant community because it brings sickness. Or are there enemies near? The busy female ant, like other working ants, is also programmed to diagnose sick and injured ants. She examines her sister to see if there's a risk of infection if she takes her home to recover. Although ants can self-medicate by seeking out the right plants, they are very cautious when it comes to disease. If it spreads to the colony, it will be a disaster. In this case, she decides there is nothing she can do. So she continues on the ant highway to work on today's assignment. But all is not right. The parasite that migrated from animal to animal has ended up inside her and is now doing its job. Her brain is under attack. She staggers at the foot of the axis. Fighting with no aim or reason towards the top. The flatworm has taken control of her brain and drives her upward. The journey seems endless. The usual determined energy has disappeared. She's barely standing upright. She's like a zombie and ends her days at the tip of the axis away from the colony and community. Inside her dying body, the flatworm is waiting for the next victim, which is why it forced the ant into the grass. Three weeks ago, the female spider mated with the cunning and generous male, and she is almost unrecognisable. She looks like she's carrying around a big and heavy snowball, but in reality, it's hundreds of little spider eggs she's dragging around. She has embarked on a dangerous journey across the lawn, but finding a safe place to create a web for her future tiny spider babies is crucial to her. It's maddening work that sometimes requires a rest. The snowball is as heavy as her own body weight. It makes her unable to catch food because she usually hunts like a cheetah by running. She's managed it, and in just a few hours, she's created a so-called breastfeeding spiderweb. On the edge of the garden, she has spun a masterpiece. She is both an architect and a weaver, 
and has built a protective pavilion of silk threads. Each thread is thinner than a human hair, but stronger than steel. Altogether, they are well over 100 meters. For the next 14 days, she'll zealously guard her eggs without eating anything until they hatch. Now, it's just a waiting game. It's been two weeks since the male starling mated, and now it's just about time. The male starling takes his share of responsibilities. He incubates the eggs during the daytime while the female finds food. Six little naked and very hungry chicks have come into the world, and now the hard work as new parents begins. The chicks are blind and defenseless. They must be fed constantly. Every chick needs at least 50 larvae a day, so the new starling parents are under massive pressure. And sometimes there's a queue at the entrance. in must come out. The male empties the diaper bin several times daily. The parents' hard work quickly pays off. In just two weeks, the chicks have doubled their weight. And very soon, they'll be able to fly away from home. The fathers want to help with the feeding, but they don't want to sleep with the rest of the family. Instead, the guys meet and sleep together in big trees. But first, they fly together in huge, mesmerizing crowds. They move in large dancing formations, as if they were controlled by the same brain and thought. In reality, they are just reacting to each other very quickly. The purpose is to confuse the enemy, but it looks beautiful. to the gardens. The flock finds a place to sleep for the night far away from demanding babies. In the mouse nest down under the lawn, it's also busy. The young bank vole siblings are now 10 days old. They have produced fur and the mother mouse's fatty milk has given the group a lot of energy. They are competing for the chance to suckle her milk. They instinctively know that their future lives depend on their own strength. And right now is a dangerous time for them, for they are eager to get up on the lawn. And here, there is danger. But for baby mice, as with human children, the forbidden areas are always the most exciting. They are under no circumstances allowed to leave the nest until they have developed eyes and are able to take care of themselves. 
Up on the surface of the lawn, it's frighteningly quiet. An unknown young male has smelled his way to the mouse hole that the older father mouse should be guarding. The mother mouse senses danger. Now the female faces a dilemma. If the male manages to get down into the cave, she will have to kill and eat her own babies. He will not father another mouse's babies. Or she can choose to fight. The mother mouse managed to scare the intruder away. Calmness subsides, and the bankfold father can continue his demanding activities above the lawn. cubs are now seven weeks old and while the mother fox keeps a watchful eye on the lively flock they now dare to move further away from the cave at this moment it's mostly fun and games but they are also training to become good hunters this is an early practice towards a real fox jump It's hard to imagine that in just two months, this little cub will be a fully grown fox. He and his siblings will be big enough to chase the chickens in our gardens just like their father. And they will be young males who will fight each other to win over females and to win the same territory. And won't even remember they were once playful and carefree. But when the mother fox calls, the pups still listen carefully. Freedom is fantastic, but the pups still immediately obey when mum calls. It's been a long and eventful day, and the pups are unwillingly running out of energy. But in the end, even the most stubborn must surrender to sleep. Everything is growing in the gardens now. The cycle of life runs its course. Midsummer approaches with bright nights and magical transformations of the animals. New secrets in the garden await to be discovered.